yes, oh yes, yes. This is episode number 19 of the Midlife Crisis Podcast. Uh, basketball uh, is back on the forefront on the podcast. Uh, if I asked the average fan who was the all-time leading scorer in New Jersey, probably nobody would think it would, would be somebody on the girl side. Uh, I, I was reaching out, especially uh, around Caitlin Clark with her breaking uh, – Pete Maravich is an all-time leading scorer record uh, in New Jersey. Uh, we have an all-time leading scorer le- record with uh, this. My next guest, she scored three thousand eight hundred ninety-nine points. Uh, I interviewed her father a couple episodes ago. Very comical. You could see uh, how uh, the apple apple doesn't fall far from the tree. She's currently running the Gems AAU basketball program, which is uh, sponsored by Nike in its third year. A very successful program. It's my pleasure to introduce to you New Jersey State all-time leading scorer for both boys and girls, Kristen Samoji. And I, first off, I just want to say thanks for, you know, setting me up with your dad. I mean, I could talk to him for hours. He, he was, uh, I mean, thanks for kind of pushing, pushing that, you know, uh, you know, I guess when we spoke, you were doing tryouts and everything else with your, with your program. And then uh, I, I know about your, obviously knew about you, knew about your dad. And, uh, but just thank you. He was really, really, uh, really, really entertaining and uh, really uh, a wealth uh, of basketball knowledge. Very, very uh, hysterical. So I guess that's, it probably was a fun place to grow up in this emoji household. So that, that was probably, probably a lot of fun, but, uh, but thank you for, uh, you know, yeah. It, yeah. Um, and then also he said that he wouldn't coach, coach you or any, any of the, your other kids, um, any, any of his other kids, he just, he did, he kind of wanted kind of, uh, to stop from, uh, he, he coached, but he didn't want to coach you guys. So he, I guess as a father, I guess he didn't feel like too much invested in that. So, uh, but, yeah. Uh, anyway, so, so that but, was yeah, uh, pretty yeah. interesting. We never had him as a coach. I mean, yeah. you know, and he really wasn't one to either coach from the sideline as a parent either, you know, it was more, you know, after game, talk that uh you know he told us the pros and cons of what we did wrong so that was a yeah. positive you know it was is it you and your brother is it, it my sister uh, i have a younger sister sister. Yeah. Yeah, sister and then uh like uh how did they introduce you? i mean obviously with his pedigree how did he introduce you into the game uh at basketball so um i you know i was kind of like a gym rat i would follow him around to his practices at st peter's in new brunswick and kind of just picked up and he often tells stories that he just kind of knew I was a natural hand-eye coordination just kind of picked up on a lot of stuff and you know I just enjoyed the game and going to his practices so I think that's what started um I started when I was about nine years old third grade uh with the St. Peter's Parish team my mother took me down and um I wore jeans the first day of practice. So that's how much I was really not understanding what I was really getting into. I thought it was just something (laughs) fun. And um, I just remember this uh, young female, um, one of the players on the team, Tammy Walker, I still remember her name to this day. You know, I was so nervous and she just, you know, pretty much took my hand and said, come on in and, you know, the rest is history, I guess. The rest is history. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, for you, I don't know if too many people know your, your story, but uh, I mean, I mean, there are a lot of people that do, but uh, I mean, you're the all time leading scorer in high school basketball for both boys and girls with uh, 3,899 points. So, that, that's an impressive, that's an impressive career. I think I got that right. Is that, is that how many points yeah. that you scored? So, yeah. I mean, that that's an impressive career, but like looking at the women's basketball now with Caitlin Clark. Can you re- relate to her and are you happy like with kind of seeing her success and like yeah. the crowds that she's drawing? And then like also n- now you're getting rivalries in South Carolina with LSU. I mean, girls basketball is still kind of starting to really take off. People are starting to garner interest. So I'll just talk a little bit about Caitlin Clark and, and the state of the girls game now. Yeah, I, I, you know, I really, you know, obviously I'm a fan of Caitlin Clark and, you know, the NCAA and what's going on right now. But, yeah, it did bring back a lot of memories. And I did get a lot of uh, text messages throughout the period of when she was breaking the record. And um, one in particular, somebody had mentioned, you know, um, you know, I we know how you're feeling today when Caitlin Clark is breaking her record. And I thought that yeah. was like, you know, really nice to somebody to reach out and remember that. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of pressure and you really want to win for your team. But at the same time, you know, the media and everybody's talking about your personal goals. So, 
you know, it, it was, it was a tough time, but a great time. And I, you know, looking back, people ask me, how do you even do it? And I, I don't know, you know, it, you know, it's, uh, I always say the fo formula to breaking my record is you got to start from day one right away as a, as a freshman and continue with the all four years. There's really no um, formula other than that. Um, you know, I know Michelle Sidor was on track to possibly break it a few years back. And um, she kind of, I guess, maintained her scoring average, um, you know, throughout her year. You know, she was very uh, successful in a freshman year. And not, not to say that she wasn't, but kind of leveled out. You know, so I was fortunate that I had a great um, team in high school and we played a lot of games and won a lot of games. So that was able, that was, you know, able for me to break the record. Yeah, your high school career, was it, was it about, I mean, obviously, the focus, offensive focus was probably on you, but like, just yeah. talk about your playing days at St. Peter's, New Brunswick, which is now, I guess it's going to be, uh, I think they just demolished it. So, I mean, how, um, just talk about a little bit of your high school years uh, and who would you play for? Yeah, so we played for, um, I played for St. Peter's in New Brunswick. Um, I played for Coach Ernie Veda, and we were good. Uh, I had a bunch of, you know, Division ones twos on our team and our coach really just let us play. So he would say, play the first three quarters, pretty much do what you want. And you guys are sitting the fourth. So yeah. we were about eight deep and we did, we would put up, you know, a lot of points a game, 90 to hundred and he let us play. And like I said, we were three out of my four year uh, Middlesex County um, County champs, uh, two state titles and one TSC um, mm -hmm. finished. I only lost seven games my entire a high school career. So it's a testament to my team, you know, obviously to myself, what we accomplished, because if you look at the record, you would say, oh my God, she probably never passed the ball. The <laughs> team probably yeah. wasn't that good, but we were, we were, we were 32 and 0 my senior year. And I remember uh, playing East Brunswick in a scrimmage and them beating us by like 25 and we weren't ready. You know, I was going into my senior year, big AU summer. And my mom getting in the car was like, you guys are not going to win another game this year. Yeah. And thirty-two and zero later, you yeah. Know, well, so sometimes losses losses so are yeah. You know, sometimes losses are good. Who's your yeah. big rival back back then? Who was your, who was your team that you kind of like? Right, like, who'd you beat in a TOC? Uh, uh, TOC, we beat uh, Egg Harbor Township. Um, Shay mm -hmm. Madlock, who went to University of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, our bigger rival was um, Piscataway for uh, Middlesex County. Um, okay. And then our state final, we we it wasn't that strong. I um, oh, and sorry. Union Catholic was good with uh, with Kathy Mass. Did you guys play uh, uh, with Coach Mass? Did you guys play them uh, at all? Uh, we uh, did. Uh, we scrimmaged them a few times, um, but they were, I believe, non-public A, and we were a and, smaller non-public yeah. B. So our state championship wasn't really, um, you know, it was like a twenty-point game. But the TC so I, was very difficult because St. John the Annie. The, and I always say the reason why we won the TSC is because St. John and Vianney lost in the semifinals, so we didn't get to play them. <laughs> yeah. So that's the big joke. Uh, you know, we said, oh, my God, thank God St. John's won with the Gomez sister. So I grew up yes. playing against them, too, um, as well. So did um, did you guys play any out-of-state tournaments like they do now, or did you play yeah. – uh, did you play a packed schedule or did you kind of just played your schedule and that was it? I guess that the Middlesex, Ca Middlesex County was probably your, your, you know, I mean, listen, that, that, that's tough. You got a lot of tough, tough teams in Middlesex tough County. Teams. So, yeah, I and think, then, you know what, it, it's not like it was now. It is now. I mean, we just, you know, I think our biggest tournament was like a Christmas tournament, yeah. you know, probably yeah. 20 minutes away. So it wasn't, I wish there were showcases, probably the biggest, um, game I played in, I played in the first ever McDonald's All-American game. Okay. Um, so that was in 1992, which is equivalent. It was called Kodak, WBCA Kodak All-American, because they were our sponsor, televised ESPN. Um, so that would be equivalent to the McDonald's today. And uh, any any reputable names in, in that or any, um, any names that kind of jumped off the page? Yeah, Katie Smith. Okay. Uh, Katie Smith, who was in um, the, the uh, Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, Wendy Palmer, who went to UVA with me, but Katie Smith was the biggest player in that uh, in that game. Yeah. And so you you end up signing with uh, Virginia. Where else were you looking looking to go to? Uh, oh, I tell the story all the time. Connecticut was was <laughs> right there with me, and uh, you know I get the question, why didn't you go to Connecticut? Connecticut wasn't Connecticut like it was now. Um, you know, and an often funny story I, I tell because, you know, I, we see Gino a lot with recruiting and he comes to a lot of our games and we yeah. become friends. 
and uh, it was myself, Jenny Busick, and Jen Rosati. And uh, Gina Rizzotti, says, sure. yeah, Jen, Gina always yeah. says, uh, and Jenny Busick is the assistant coach now at uh, Indiana Pacers, who had a great career, too, at UVA. And uh, Gina always says, I knew I was getting two out of the three of you. <laughs> and yeah. us two went to UVA. Yeah. Jen Rosati goes to UConn. She goes and changed the entire, you know, program yeah, that, around for UConn. Yeah, so, so that, yeah, they, they've been on a, on a tear ever since. So, I mean, well, yeah, and I, Chris Daly was, uh, went to my high school. So, I grew up watching Chris Daly when she was, you know, played at Rutgers. So, you know, that, that decision was tough, but for me going to UVA, it was a no brainer. Don Staley was graduating and Tammy Reese was graduating. Yeah. So it so was I, an opportunity for me to come right in. I was going to touch on that Dawn Staley. I mean, listen, I went, where I went to college, there was a lot of, a lot of kids from Philly. They said she probably could beat most boys yeah. in, 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 the, in the Philly publicly. Like she was a, a great, great player. Obviously a great coach in South Carolina. Did you guys cross paths at all at Virginia? Like in a recruiting process at all? Or? Yeah, yeah. In the recruiting process, you know, I, and I, you know, I, I know Dawn and one of the girls who actually is, um, was our equipment manager ended up staying linked to Dawn and she's Dawn's personal assistant now. So we still keep in contact. And, you know, I actually got Dawn Staley's locker when I got there. So I thought, okay. Oh my God, this is, you know, yeah. but yeah. you know, we have great respect for her again. Tammy Reese is the head coach at Rhode Island now. So she recruits a lot of our players with uh, the gems program. So we all still keep in touch. Yeah. So, and you went down to Virginia. I don't know what that coach was thinking, yeah. you know, yeah. like you just never really, the career didn't really kind of pan out. The way yeah. you the way you wanted your freshman year, so just like you know, and you you thought it changed. Your dad had a kind of similar situation. We went to New Mexico, and then you know he ended up coming back to Rutgers. So you end up went to Rutgers. I guess you end up playing with uh, Teresa Grinch was still there. Uh, she was the coach at the time, correct? Right, right, yeah, yeah. You know, it's you know you're you're young when you make the decision. You're 18. You know, looking back, I probably wish I would have stayed, but um, you know I didn't, and you know, a message out there to, to a lot of these incoming freshmen, you kind of almost have to wait your turn. But I think the situation when I was in was a little bit different. Um, I think I, you know, probably should have played more than I did, but you know, it's hindsight and uh, mm. you just got to be prepared as a freshman and be prepared. You know, it's, it's tough. It really is tough with that higher level um, NCAA play. And then I transferred, you know, back to Rutgers, which, you know, it was fine. I ended up playing three years um, there, but I had, you know, three different coaches. So then I had uh, Teresa Grant and then Teresa left to Illinois and then coach Vivian Stringer came in. Yeah. So, oh. you know, it was three different coaches and, you know, a matter of four, four years. Did, four or five did you play years. with, did you play with Cheryl Kopp? I know she went to Rutgers. Was she there? Yeah, no, Cheryl graduated. Well, was she like, you know, when I transferred in, she had just graduated. So yeah, because uh, you know, she played. She went to the same grammar school I did, and like she played on our boys' team. She was that good, and, yeah. and she by far was the best player. But she she had a phenomenal career at Union Catholic. So I mean, thousand point score, two state championships. When we went to Rutgers and so. But I mean, was that, so how was C C Vivian Stringer? How was did you know like coming in like this is like going to be something special? Like she she really kind of propel the program, you know, yeah. uh, you know uh, propel the program to another level. So she did, she, you know, I mean, the tradition at Rutgers goes back to Chris Daly, Mary Klinger, Patty Coyle, you know, Teresa Grant. So the tradition of Rutgers was always there. I think there was just a time where, you know, it was kind of losing its um, lore, I guess, so to speak, you know, and I think Vivian came into the picture and really recruited the top players around the country, you know, and, and led the team, you know, to a final four. So when I was a senior, those girls were all freshmen, that final four team. Um, okay. So, you know, she came in and got, you know, the players and did the job that she was supposed to at Rutgers. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and she had a, you know, hall of fame career, but uh, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I know you're involved in the AAU program. Did you play AAU? Was there a girls AAU time at, yes. in high school? So, I mean, how, was there a lot of programs? Uh, AAU? No, there was like maybe like three or four, not like it is today. We were the New Jersey Monarchs coached by Karen Fasello up in uh, Belleville. Um, I actually started at Trenton AAU and then we moved, we went up to Belleville and, um, you know, now like it's different, like the EYBL, you'll have a lot of division ones on your team, but back then it was very few like it would be one team of like eight to nine yeah. kids um that are, were going d1 of the best kids in the state you know it wasn't watered down like it is now eybl isn't watered down but when i grew up 
you know, it was all the best kids and then you would go to the national tournament. Now is all little mini tournaments and exposure events and recruiting periods, um, not just like one. And camps were very popular too when I grew up. So that was and, another thing that- all And I, I know the, there was a, the New Jersey Gems, they played at Dunn Sports Arena. Is that, that how you name your- are you, are you affiliated with the, the New Jersey Cardinals or is it the Gems? Yes. So, I mean, what, what, what's the, what's the program that you're affiliated with now that you're, you're kind of co coaching now? So, yeah, so we started Gems um, about 15 years ago, very successful um, program in, you know, all, all across the country. And then uh, Nike came in and gave us a contract. And so we just completely switched the name and it was kind of, it's somewhat based off of uh, the, I think Carol Blasiowski was on that, that team, yeah. the, the, yeah. the GEMS program. So we thought it was fitting. Um, so Nike comes in with a contract, and EYBL stands for Elite Youth Basketball League. And there's 30 team, 32 teams in the country that play in a circuit. Um, so we do four different stops. So we're going to uh, Virginia, Boo Williams. Um, we're going to Houston, Texas, Louisville, and uh, Chicago. And those are the four stops for the recruiting for college coaches to come and recruit us. So that, that, that's your program? And like, is it your, uh, your, yes, that's your, my program. Yes, I'm running that with uh, my co-director, Shannon Coyle. So the two mm -hmm. of us have been involved since the beginning with the Cardinals. Well, Shannon, was she the one on Rutgers uh, with, with the uh, the team that beat Texas? Is that is that a... No, that's no, that's Mary Ann Patty Coyle. Okay, she yeah. just happens to have this uh, same last okay. name. Shannon Coyle is the head coach of Long Branch. Okay. Um, high school and she's, you know, a big part of the Cardinal program. And then, then we ended up getting this. So it's, you know, pretty big deal when you're sponsored by Nike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how did Nike find you? Like how did Nike, uh, like it? through Cardinals through winning. Um, so 10 years ago was the, the EYBL was established. So I think they started off pretty small and we were yet not a Nike sponsored team, but we were beating some of these Nike sponsored teams in these exposure events. And you kind of got to wait your turn. And our turn was up in because uh, uh, the tri-state area. So one of the sponsored teams in New Jersey was basically losing their sponsorship. And they we were kind of the next in line. Um, so we're year three now. Uh, last year, we won the whole 15 and under Nike Nationals, which was great. And uh, we currently have, well, so there's three EYBL teams. There's 15s, which are freshmen, sophomores, 16s, and 17s are the juniors. And then we have four younger teams. Um, and you have any 16. players? Uh, you have any players that are, that you're probably gonna kind of see this time of year? You know, down the road. Do you have any players that are? We have some young ones that are coming up. Uh, last year we had Michaela Blake's, uh, who was the McDonald's All American, so she was our kind of our marquee name. Uh, her brother plays for Duke, Jalen Blake's. So we yeah. had her. Uh, Michaela grew up with us since fourth grade. So okay. we had Michaela all the way up until, you know, the last, uh, I guess I would say six months. Um, and then, um, yeah, we just have a lot of really good new players that are, and, you'll see. And where's, where's the home base and uh, where's the home base for you guys? We're at a Rutgers prep in Somerset. Okay. So that's where uh, Mary Klinger and Rutgers prep, you know, obviously they play and Mary Klinger was one of my AAU coaches. So we've had established relationships and we ended up starting camps at Rutgers prep. And um, that's how I got into the shooting lessons was uh, a girl who came to my camp had asked me if she could, if I can come to her house and shoot, she had a basket and I did. And then um, she goes to Rutgers prep and she's like, well, you know, it's starting to get winter time. Can you shoot with me at Rutgers prep at my school? And then from there it kind of just took off this whole yeah. Shooting yeah. lessons, AAU, everything. Yeah, yeah. So you also teach too. Do you, do you coach high yeah. school as well? I mean, I, I mean, I don't, yeah, you know, no, I, or, I just teach. I'm a teacher full time at uh, Rahway Middle School on health and PE. Okay. And um, like I said, I started the, I, I, I mean, I would, co I coached here and there, but I haven't in a while. So I've been mostly skills training, with, you know, mostly a shooting coach over the, you know, the past 15 years. And so. how, how happy are you with this, the, the gyms? A, how happy with the program is it kind of is it kind of what you envision what you dream dreamed it would be or yeah it was it was what we were trying to our end goal to accomplish and it you know it really it's it it's it, you know it's eye-opening too because once you get to that level it, i mean you're you know you're playing against the best kids like last summer we played against shaquille o'neal's daughter and he was at the game so you see a lot of 
you know, great players that you're playing against. And then obviously, you know, the families of these great players and these coaches that are coming to a game. So, you know, uh, we have a girl on our team that's six, five and I was at all our games last summer to watch her play. And I remember specifically one of the games we were at, the ball went out of bounds and Dawn Staley picked it up and rolled it back to the ref. So, it's, yeah, so you know, those yeah, are the things that we get to see over the summer. Yeah, right? absolutely. Sure. And it's good. To, it's good to hear that, you know, the girls are getting the recognition like, you know, that, 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 that they, they deserve, but like what, what coaches do you see like that are out there? Like you kind of model yourself at minus your dad. I know your dad's probably been the biggest influence, but like what coaches do you see like out there that you kind of like, you like their style and you would kind of copy. I would bring it back to probably Dawn Staley and Gino Oriama. I think they just bring a great presence to the game, a great calmness. Um, I think just years and years of producing great players um, I think young coaches should learn from them. You know, they've been there for years, but I just, you know, I, like I said, it's just that calmness um, and, and the hard work that those kids put in that really, you know, is impressed and, you know, impressive and the way they and, uh, change the game. With the tournament coming up now, like who, who do you like, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you got Caitlin Clark, who you kind of see as a score. I mean, it was a little controversy last year with LSU and, and Caitlin. And now you got another controversy with, you know, the, the bump with the South Carolina LSU. So yeah. there, there's a, I guess rivalries are good for the game, I guess, you know, it's always been so. But which, yeah. who do you like? Who do you like? And then what about locally? What what co what programs do you kind of see locally that year would maybe steer a kid to like or, or recommend, hey, these are these are what you're looking for? Yeah, well, you know, we support all our Jersey teams, you know, the Tony Bonzella at CN Hall, you know, Coquise at, at Rutgers. So we make sure we tell our kids to make, you know, and encourage them to go to the, the games during the season, Mammoth, Ginny at Mammoth. So there's quite a few that we want to tell them, look at your in-state schools as well. But, um, you know, so we have some kids that are of the, that top 25 level. And, um, you know, I do like, of course, you know, you know, Dawn Staley, uh, you know, uh, Gino, I think, he, you know, obviously he does a great job local. Uh, I think the Fairfield coach is doing a great job. You know, she is, she's on the 26 game uh, win streak. Um, Carla Barubi at uh, Princeton. So, you know, she's another in, in, in state. Uh, person. Yeah, and they're, and they're, they're both, the, they're both in a tournament this year. Fair, yeah. Fairfield yeah. And, and Princeton are both in a tournament. So, so and what about it's nice to cheer for the underdogs too? Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, so a little bit different, different than the boys with the upsets with the girls. But I think you'll see that, you know, coming, you know, starting, you know, in two days that you'll see some more upsets with the women's game. Do you ever go to any of the games though, like the NCAA tournament games? Do you ever go to any game, or do you ever go to any check on any Rutgers games? Uh, you're, I you're, did. You're, I went to <laughs> see Caitlin Clark at Rutgers, and yeah. and it was, uh, you know during COVID she had played there and nobody was there because it was a COVID game. And uh, my friend and I were walking through the back hallway and Caitlin was walking up to an interview and we were like, can we get a picture? Mm. And like now fast forward to a few months ago when Caitlin was at the rack and you couldn't even get near her. Yeah. I mean, and, and when, when she was trying to break the record at Nebraska, I mean, it was like, that was like the hottest ticket in town. I mean, if I was that coach, I'm like, she's not, you know, she's not going to break the record on our court. I don't care what okay, you do. Sure. And she ended up, and I'm, I'm not doing it, but I mean, there was a, I mean, it's good for the game. And what do you think about Rutgers in the big 10? Do you think that's a good move for, for the women's sports overall or. Yeah, 100%. I think it is, you know, because I just like, you know, when I played at Virginia and we were in the ACC and then I came back home to Rutgers and we were in the Atlantic 10, it really is a big difference with the conferences of, you know, just everything from just the facilities and, um, you know, the amount of money they give to the conferences. And these kids are looking for that now, you know, the, the best, you know, the NIL deals, you know, pretty much what the universities can give to them. You know, the mm -hmm. transfer portal is, really crazy now. And, and, you know, it's unfortunate because some of these high school kids, you know, might get overseen because of this transfer portal because yeah. these coaches are going to look at. Yeah. Kids true. And a, co a COVID year too. I mean, they're limited amount, yeah. but do you see any of the kids in the AAU have um, NIL deals? I mean, is it, uh, is, it, yeah. is it, is it going down to your level? You see yes. some, some. It is. We have the twins from Morris Catholic. They have a Puma deal. Um, the kid Kyomi Miller has a Jordan brand deal. Not many. You know, I would probably say there's yeah. about six of them in the high school level. Um, but, you know, I think it's going to go there towards, you know, a lot more. Because my mom always jokes and said, God, I wish, 
taking place now. Oh. And then I know it would have been some, you know, because social media really wasn't that big then, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, I had, you know, ESPN, Good Morning America, Sports Illustrated, but you know, those are huge names, but I can't imagine what it would be today with the yeah. and, chasing, uh, chasing of the record. Yeah. But how did they, like, how did they, um, like, how do they find these kids? Like, how do you find like, like, how do you sneak? I mean, I could see in college, like they go to the university and they, and they sponsor, but how, how do they, and then also some high schools have like, that's been going on for a while, but how do you find these individual kids? So, I mean, I, yeah, I get... think it's most, mostly that circuit, the, you know, the national circuit, the EYBL, the, um, you know, these showcase high school games and they kind of, you know, and part of the NIL deal is having an appeal to, you know, like the twins are twins, you know? Yeah. Um, so that kind of helps their, uh, um, your, your followers on Instagram. A lot of that comes into play nowadays, yeah. you know, TikTok presence, so, um, you know, we, we do, we encourage that with the kids, um, set up your social media account, follow us on the account, tag us on this account. And yeah. that's, you know, pretty much how these kids get noticed. And then like, I, I guess some of the, the highest paid NIL, you know, money earners are, 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 you know, I guess are, are, are women athletes too. So it's just like, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know, uh, balancing, balancing the like, you know, I guess the one gymnast from LSU, uh, the one basketball player from yeah. LSU, I mean, they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, getting, getting paid, which is, uh, you know, sometimes players are getting paid all the time, but now it's just like, you know, it's kind of, it's taken away from the back room. So, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's, you know, deserved and, you know, we're finally catching up to the men's game. We have a long way still to go, but it's, it's, you know, a lot of promising stuff, yeah. especially this year. Yeah. Are you, are your tryouts done? I mean, if somebody's listening to this, are yeah. your tryouts done? Are you kind of are, set for your team? Yeah. Our tryouts are done now for the spring summer. Um, I have three weeks of camp that I'll be doing over at Rutgers prep. I also do a ton of shooting lessons. If anybody's interested uh, you know, they can text message me or follow me on Instagram. Um, you know, and other than that, you know, we're just going to go into the spring. We have our first tournament in a month and, you know, we're looking forward to that. We have some great coaches and uh, yeah. So. All right. Well, listen, Kristen, I know I'm catching you after, after your day. I appreciate you setting up your time with your dad and, you know, I know we were going back and forth, but we, you were doing tryouts and stuff like that. So I just wanted to say thank you. And, and thanks for telling your story because I mean, like, you know, I'm around uh, the same age as you, I'm a little bit older than you, but I'm around the same age, but like your name was synonymous with Jersey basketball. And it's just like, I think if you talk to the average basketball fan and ask them, who who the uh, uh, all time leading scorer is? Everybody's probably say Dewan Wagner, and they would say <laughs> Kristen Simoji. So just like uh, you know, so hopefully it's a record that stands a long time. And uh, you know, listen, it's uh, your, your name is synonymous with uh, Jersey basketball. So I just really, really uh, appreciate the time, and, and good luck to you with the new venture. And you know, Nike's behind you. That that you know that 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 probably solves a lot of financial issues too. So yeah. just as far as you know, travel expenses and everything else. But, but thanks for. Uh, for the time and, and I'll, I'll send you this uh, recording once, once it's edited. So. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. And I always tease my dad. I said, listen, if he had the three point line, I don't think I would have broke his record. So I said, <laughs> there should be a little asterisk next yeah. to his name. Yeah. So, well, you know. well, he sounds, he sounds like he, he earned it on the foul line getting yes. probably clobbered, uh, you know, getting, uh, going, uh, they probably said the same thing. You just foul this kid. Let him, let him, uh, yeah. let him, uh, beat, beat the points on, on the foul line. But, but thanks, yeah. Kristen. I appreciate it. Good luck to you. You know, okay. all your tournaments. But, thanks, be Jim. well, be well and stay safe. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to thank, uh, coach Moji for her time. Also thanks, uh, Dave Sturgeo for, uh, allowing me to run out the studio and producing these episodes, doing a really great job. Uh, if you're looking for podcasting, uh, don't look too far. Chop Sports Studios. Uh, the tournament's time is probably in full swing. Enjoy the games uh, and look for another episode coming to you very soon. Have a great day and talk to you soon. Yeah.